Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jishon and welcome back to my game engine series. So last time we talked about layers and we made the whole layer stack system. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already. And now that we've got all of that, what I would like to kind of proceed with and the direction that I want to take this right now and the next steps is actually getting I am GUI running. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am GUI is like a, it's, a, it's an immediate mode kind of GUI system. So if you haven't um, checked out my OpenGL series video on I am GUI, definitely check that out. It'll be linked up there as well. Um, it just lets us kind of really easily kind of immediate mode a, a GUI, a GUI in, um, just so that we can like debug things or click on buttons and have things happen. It, it's a UI, right? That's what it lets us do. And it's really easy to use. Um, for me, that's one of the first things that I love setting up in a game engine or any kind of really like any kind of graphics project really, because being able to kind of both see information as well as kind of adjust values or kind of make things happen that's like, I couldn't live without that. Like, I don't think that's possible. Like I don't want to, for example, recompile code every time I want to change a variable, right? I just want to have a little slider on the screen. Um, that kind of stuff. It's really useful for that. And definitely that, that open gel series video that I made on IMGUI will kind of fam familiarize you guys with that. If you haven't heard of it yet, or if you can't kind of imagine why something like that might actually be useful. All right. Anyway, so, um, in order to get IMGUI actually working though, um, what we need to do, well, we don't need to do this, but we're going to do this first because it's going to more or less future proof our I'm going implementation. Um, we need a way to actually use modern OpenGL. So right now the graphics API that we're kind of going with is OpenGL. Hazel will be kind of the architecture of Hazel will for sure support any kind of graphics API, right? Right now it's just going to be OpenGL to begin with. There's a lot of reasons for that. I think I covered that in the planning video. Um, and don't worry, like it's not going to be, it's not going to be really, it's not going to be hard at all for us to like switch to Vulkan or like, you know, add on DirectX. That should be really quite easy, probably like a day's worth of work. Um, but in the beginning, we're going to go with OpenGL just because it is both the simplest API that is out there. And also it's kind of, it's the most cross-platform API that we actually have at the moment that is also that level of simplicity, right? So DirectX 11, you could argue is not that difficult as well. Whereas Vulkan is more or less on DirectX 12 level, um, which is a lot more low, lower level. Uh, however, DirectX 11 is only available on Windows and I want people to easily be able to port this um, to other platforms, especially uh, because we have pre-make set up, it should just work pretty much, right? I don't think we're using any Windows specific code anyway. All right, I don't want to spend this episode talking about what we're doing. Basically, what we need to do is we need a way to load all of the modern OpenGL functions from our GPU drivers into just our C++ code, right? So I want to be able to call functions that are stored inside our graphics drivers. That's basically the idea. Now in the OpenGL series, we did, we used something called GLEW glue, which is the OpenGL like extension wrangler or something. There's a link in the top left corner as well to that video in case you want to check out that version. This, in this series for this engine, I'm actually going to use something different. I'm actually going to use something called GLAD, um, which is, I don't know if it stands for something. It probably does. Um, it just says multi-language GL loader generator based on the official specs. Anyway, it's a little bit better and more modern in my um, uh, experience than glue. Glue is something that I used to use kind of in the past, but this is a little bit more configurable um, and it's just a little bit, I just like it a little bit more, but, but I just want you to know that there's no real difference. <laughs> like for example, the OpenGL series is kind of the little uh, framework that we have there is built using glue, whereas I'm using Glad for this. They do the same thing. I don't think it's not, I don't think you'll notice any performance differences or anything like that. I'm just going to use Glad here because it's a little bit more modern. Um, but apart from that, uh, basically the function of both of these things is to check out our kind of graphics driver DLL and just load certain functions that we know are in there so that we can then call them from our C++ code. That is what these libraries do. Let's take a look at how we can set this up. Um, it's, it should be dead simple. We're going to actually configure it using the website first, then download it, then add it as a separate project and then add a pre-made file to it so that it is a separate project. Um, and we're just going to commit it as part of our repository. Um, so it's not going to be like a fork from another repository like I did with JLFW and like I'm going to do with IMGUI as well. All right, let's just jump into it. Okay, so this website that we have here, I'm gonna link in the description below, but basically just lets us kind of configure what we actually want um, the GLAD file to look like. So this will actually generate some code for us, essentially. Um, so the language, of course, will be C, C++. Um, 
OpenGL is going to be our specification. We're going to go with the core uh, compel with the core profile because we don't want any kind of compatibility functions, which means we don't want it to support deprecated functions. Um, the API, I'm going to go with um, core 4.6, right, for GL. Uh, extensions, I don't really... Right now, it's very difficult for me to say that I want certain extensions because this will most likely lend itself when we get to optimizing things or we want to do some fancy things. Um, like, uh, I don't know, just like sharing memory between DirectX and OpenGL potentially, stuff like that. Um, most of these extensions should not be, I don't think we'll need any of them right now. Um, so, and obviously once we do need them, we can just regenerate this file. So that's kind of the settings that I'm using right now. 4.6 GL, um, OpenGL of course, and then the core profile. So now all I have to do is, uh, we'll generate a loader. I'll just hit generate and then this will, um, create this kind of web page. Uh, here I'm going to just click on glad.zip to download it. And then that should pretty much have everything we need. So if I open that, um, we have included in source. Okay. So I'm going to copy that. Inside Hazel, I'm going to go to our um, uh, solution directory here. I'm going to go into Hazel. I'm going to go into Vendor. I'm going to make a new folder called Glad. And I'm going to paste that in there. Uh, and you can see that the, I mean, there's one source file. It's quite large. And then there's also like a bunch of include files. We probably won't need KHR at all. Um, Glad.h is kind of what we're looking at. Um, and then that's kind of that's kind of it, right? <laughs> so all we need to do now is make a premake file and then add kind of this premake file into our premake file. So if I uh, open up this premake file, um, I've said premake file about five times in four seconds, but anyway, uh, you can see that we include, you know, this one, we also are going to essentially be including glad, right? And then these include directories as well, I'm gonna duplicate so that we have glad here. Um, and then, you know, when we come down here to include certain things, hopefully you guys are enjoying this live coding because I know a lot of people have been complaining about that. Um, I'll try and do live coding as much as I can, but sometimes it just gets a little bit difficult. Um, we'll link Glad as well. A good idea is just to search kind of for wherever GLFW is um, and then just maybe see if we need to do the same for Glad. Uh, that's gonna be my, my pro strat right now. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I mean, the, the biggest thing is we, we need to link it as a project um, because of course it's going to compile into a static library. Um, and then also we need to make sure that the include directories are actually in our include directories for Hazel. That's pretty much it, okay? So that's done. Now we need to actually make a pre-make file for uh, Glad. So what I'll do is um, if I go into glfw, I can just kind of steal that pre-make file, put it in here, and then we can take a look at what it looks like. So project name will be glad. Um, this is actually a, uh, oh, actually glad is a C project as well, isn't it? What language is glad written in? It is C. Okay, great. So this is going to be quite similar. It's going to be a static library. Project name is glad. Um, output directory is the same, right? Now files, uh, in include, we have glad, glad.h. So include glad is the it's just lowercase g, lad, glad, glad.h, whoops. I want to actually be quite explicit with the files here. Um, khr, include khr, khr platform. I mean, I could just obviously have it include everything, kind of like what we have with Hazel, um, but I do want to actually be explicit here, just so that um, we're a bit more aware glad.c because we should only have three files anyway. Okay, so those are, those are the three files that glad kind of has. Um, I don't think I've made any mistakes here. No, that looks good. Um, this stuff, I don't really want any of this to be honest. So it's kind of, I don't think we need any of this really. Um, I mean, static runtime and stuff, we will need, I'm not gonna do multi-threaded. Oh, okay, I'll kind of get rid of this. Um, and this should obviously be latest. Um, I probably should update it to W to be that as well. No build options at all. And then the last thing I want to do is actually add this include directory to the includers that we have here. So include. All right, and that is it. Um, one thing I want to do actually, because I've kind of just looked at this website and realized that Glad really isn't all in uppercases. Maybe I do actually want to make it more kind of lowercase e. 
So if we go back to our other premake file, I'll just maybe make this glad like that um, and probably change the folder name as well. Because uh, I don't think it stands for anything apparently. Um, or at least the website implies that it doesn't. So we'll kind of make sure that any place it says glad, it's in the correct way, good. Uh, and then if we go to disk, um, I'm not sure if this will let us rename. Okay, it did, good. Just because in Windows, of course, uh, directory names and file names are not uh, case sensitive. Okay, cool. So there we go. We've got everything here. Um, we, this should just work. Um, what we can do now is just try and regenerate our projects and then hopefully uh, everything will just work. So we didn't get any errors from Premake. If we reload it, we should get um, glad here. Okay, fantastic. And then apart from having all of our files here, which is perfect, uh, we should also see that Hazel now references uh, glad, which it does. So you can see that was me kind of making a Premake script pretty much from memory. I mean, I did copy and paste the GLFW one, but you can see just how simple um, Premake is. I love Premake. Okay, let's build our whole solution and see what happens. And um, blah, blah, blah. okay, one succeeded, fantastic. So everything succeeded. So now all we really need to do to use glad is uh, initialize it, right? So there is a function inside here that lets us actually load um, something. Uh, okay, that's not, I think it's glad gl load or something. Glad load GL loader. There it is. Okay. So this, if we specify this, um, and I, I wish that this had I'm not even, I don't think I remember where the documentation is for this stuff. Um, if we look at GitHub, maybe we'll see how to use it. Um, anyway, I know how to use it because I've used it before, but essentially what we need to do is just call this function, um, with the load kind of function that we have that will allow us to load uh, kind of DLL files um, or functions from there. So to do that, um, I'm just going to go into Windows window. And then um, over here is where we kind of initialize GLFW um, and also create the OpenGL context. So once we've kind of made that context, that's where I kind of want to um, actually do uh, the glad stuff. So we'll do glad load GL loader. Um, and let me just quickly include glad first of all. So it's in the include part. So we should just be able to say, glad, glad.h, like that. Um, this can be a lowercase. Um, and then glad gl loader, of course, needs a glad load proc. And then the function that we're gonna give it is actually glfw, uh, it's actually glfw get proc address, like that, okay? Um, and then all we'll do is we'll do a core assert here on status and then, you know, fail to initialize glad or something like that. Initialize. Okay, cool. So that should be pretty much all that we need to do. Um, we're gonna put a breakpoint here and then hit F5 to run this code. Um, error, open gel header already included. Um, okay, cool. So I remove this include glad already provides it. So it's unhappy that we're including open gel twice. Um, let's see whether this is actually happening. So here glfw um, is included. I don't know why we did that. Uh, Cause I didn't think we need any of it. Um, what I'm going to do is probably end up um, doing something like this. So we'll do struct glfw window here just to get that um, and then include glfw after glad. Um, it doesn't, there's probably a way to just not have it include uh, gl. Um, because yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can tell it not to because there's glfw include none. So I think that maybe we should just do that. Um, so inside Hazel, uh, that's right, we need to do this in Premake, don't we? So we'll go back to Hazel, we'll go back to uh, Premake, and then one of the defines that we will use um, uh, somewhere here, where are our defines for system windows? So I don't know if I wanna do this just for windows. Um, well, I mean, it's in the windows window for now. Yeah, let's just put it here. Um, we'll do glfw include none, okay? Uh, and that just will not include any glfw. Uh, it will not include any open gl headers when you include glfw. That's the idea. So now if we undo this um, and we have glad here, we don't need this. If we try and build this, uh, it should work. No, it's not working. Okay, open gl header. Ah, oh, well, of course I didn't regenerate the projects. So let's generate the projects. 
reload this, try and compile that. And there you go. Okay, succeeded. Fantastic. So now with our breakpoint in place, let's hit F5. Okay, it's not happy with uh, these clear calls because we're including this. Um, glad, glad.h, because glad now has all of our OpenGL defines. Let's see if we get any other errors. Nope, F5. There is our breakpoint. Um, and status is one, okay? Which obviously means it succeeded because we're asserting if it's not zero. Um, we're asserting that it's not zero. Okay, fantastic. So we can basically say that that's it, it's all done. Um, another way to quickly check, uh, which is maybe a little bit hacky, but if we try, I think window create should create everything, right? So if we try and do something like gel gen vertex arrays, clearly something that is, um, clearly something that is, uh, it's an unsigned int something that is uh, modern OpenGL, then um, first of all, this function should not be null, right? So yeah, it executed and it gave us a valid ID. So you can see that everything worked successfully. All right, so that is how we set up Glad. Um, I don't think I need to go over the changes with you guys. This will be pushed to GitHub. You can look at the change log yourselves. Uh, but yeah, so that is um, Glad. And then in the next episode, we'll be able to use Glad to actually uh, implement I'm GUI using um, modern OpenGL. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit the like button. Also, huge thank you to all the Patreon supporters that made this series possible. Uh, if you're not supporting the series on Patreon, definitely go check that out. Huge thank you to you guys, as always. You'll get um, all the episodes a week early, as well as access to my kind of private development branch in which I've already done a lot of this work. So you can kind of see like months and months ahead um, as to where this engine is going. And you can kind of, I mean, I, I kind of, as, when I work on that, I also kind of, you know, commit as I go. So you can see minimal changes. You don't need to be like, okay, now I've got this complete engine and I don't know how it works. So you can kind of go back a few commits and just see kind of how it evolves as well. Because that, that kind of development branch is largely where this series is going. I do make changes um, like here and there, but, you, but mostly it's the same. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. Um, okay, so that's glad. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to set up. Premake makes this stuff really easy, as you can see as well, so I love that. Um, in the next episode, we're gonna take a look at basically having a very basic implementation of I'm GUI. Now, the thing is, we're gonna add I'm GUI as a sub-module and obviously do all of that stuff. Um, and we're actually gonna take their example OpenGL implementation um, and go from there. And probably there, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna reference their example GLFW implementation, but I'm not going to just take it word for word, because I want to actually make an I'm GUI layer, which has all of that stuff basically, because we don't really need to, you know, do all of the, all of the GLW initialization that should be abstracted in a window. So we're going to kind of hack in I'm GUI next episode because it's way too early for us to be able to do it properly. The reason is we don't have a renderer at the moment. Okay. Um, and obviously we need to be able to do things like compile shaders, right? So, Mm, but I want to get I'm GUI up and running because we'll be able to do that rather easily. Even if we do, like, we will have to write, uh, we will have to write open gel code basically is what I'm saying. Cause we don't have a renderer yet. It's not abstracted. Um, but once we do have a renderer, and once that is abstracted, we'll be able to convert that I'm GUI layer and that I'm GUI code that I'm GUI renderer essentially to use Hazel's API. And that'll be awesome because it'll mean, first of all, we'll have one kind of I'm GUI rendering implementation, um, for all uh, rendering APIs, like once we have DirectX and everything, it'll just be, just be great. Um, but also, uh, also it will be, um, it'll kind of, well in general, it'll just, it'll just use Hazel instead of just using raw OpenGL calls, which we, which we don't want to do anyway. So that's going to be the plan for the next episode. Um, it should be kind of quick and dirty, but I do want to get it in because when we are building our renderer, being able to have a UI is going to be really important. That's why I kind of want to do this first. Whew. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.